Welcome to Fabulosity for you and my name is Angie. If this is your first time watching my video, please click the subscribe button, then click the notification bell so when I upload videos, you will be the first to know. Like this video and make a comment. This channel is about fashion, relationship advice, and lifestyle. And if this is not your first time visiting my channel, well, welcome back, my queens, and welcome to the kings out there. Okay, so it's Wednesday. It's Ratchet Wednesday. It's Ratchet Wednesday. And today I'll be doing the review of the 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days, Season 7, Episode 13, The Dark is Rising. Okay, so it was so much going on this week with the before the 90 Days. But before we go into that, go get your drink of choice. Go get your snack of choice and come back and sit with your girl, Angie. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. The first person we're going to talk about, the first couple that we will be talking about is Sonny and Vega. So, last week, Sonny met Rory and he gave Via an ultimatum to tell Rory to go back home. She was like, oh no, I need Rory. You run out all the time. You ran out on me before. I don't want to be alone in a country I don't know anything about. So no, he needs to stay. So he had a big attitude, honey, and he like ran out saying, this is it. I can't deal with this. It's over. I don't want you. You can have him and runs out. She chases him down. Oh, Rory, Rory, I, I love, I want you, Rory. I don't want him. Now, my thing is, I'm kind of tired of her begging this man. Granted, I think that it was wrong that she bought him out there without his knowledge, knowing how he felt that he was a jealous individual. But let's talk about the jealousy here. Because to me, he goes too far gone when he's upset. He's running and leaving this girl in a, a country that she knows nothing about. Saying, I don't want you, go head on. I mean, is it that serious? She did come down to visit you. Rory wasn't bothering them. And so the problem is not Rory. The problem is her. That's what he should feel a certain way about and that's cool you can't take it okay but just to leave her there and snap off you know even if he decided hey this is not what i want to deal with he can easily say listen i understand really i don't understand but you seem to need rory and it is what it is i'm not down with it but while you're here we can still be cool we can be friends and that's it but to race off and, and leave her, to me, is just doing too much. Especially when he's not being honest with her. Because the friend spilled the beans when the friends told him a few weeks ago, told Sonny, uh, told Vea a few weeks ago, that you have to be a Muslim to marry this man. There are rules you're going to have to follow. And he told her none of that. And what I don't like about him is that he's not treating her like a Muslim woman. He's he's having sex with her and, and all of the things when that's not allowed, if I'm not mistaken, with Muslim women before marriage. So when is he when did he plan on springing this to her or her? When she's falling in love? I think that's what he was gonna do. So he not right either. And I'm sick of her chasing after this man. I think she needs to cut her losses and go head on. And so does he. But we have to wait and see what happens. Now, she did tell him she will. if Because he said it's, it's only one way we're going to work this out. And that's if you tell him to go. And she finally agreed to tell Rory to go. So we have to find out what happened next week on what happens with that. So the next couple we're going to talk about is Boza and Vanya. Okay, so Boza left Vanya outside. She ran outside and she was crying. And uh, the friends were like, man, this week, man, are you going to go out there and get her? Go out there. Do you want her? Do you want to go get her? 
And he was like, no, I'm not attracted to her. I don't want her. And I can't help, I can't make myself want her. So they was like, listen, go out there to that woman. So she's standing out there crying, ooh, the ugly cry. And he comes out and he's like, listen, I would like to talk to you. And she was like, no, I don't need to talk to you. And she's snapping off, walking off. So he's like, well, I think we need to talk. And she, he was like, she was like, no, no, I don't want to talk to you. So he was like, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, okay? I just, it is my feelings. And I'm just being honest. And she said, listen, I, okay, I get it. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I don't need to talk to you. And so he goes on and says, well, listen, Maybe we can talk tomorrow. No, we don't have to talk tomorrow. Well, then, if we don't talk no more, I wish you the best. I, I hope you, I wish you well in life. Now, first of all, she wanted him to chase her because when she was walking off, she was looking back and all of the things. And he's not going to do that. He didn't even want to come outside. So, He's like, listen, if I don't see you no more in life, take care. Now, I just think that Boza was wrong because you're supposed to be a gentleman. And, you know, I have a brother and I have male, you know, family members. And we've talked about meeting people and, and I always told my family members, if you don't like the way she, when you get, when you meet her, if you don't like how she looks in person, or if you don't like, and it could be anything, what comes out of her mouth, how she's talking, the conversation, her attitude, don't just leave her there. Make sure you, you, you make sure that she gets home safe. You make sure that you call her if you guys came in separate cars and make sure she got home safe. And, and after that, you don't owe her nothing. But as a man, as a gentleman, you make sure that woman gets home safe. And so he should have no matter what followed her to the hotel to make sure she made it to her door safely. I don't, have, I don't care how the woman is talking. Make sure she make it home safe. And he could have said, listen, we don't have to talk. I just want to make sure you get to where you're going safely. And that's it. That's being a gentleman. So I didn't like that he didn't do that. And she's in a foreign country on top of that. What kind of nonsense is that? But I do get it. I mean, you can't make somebody love you. You can't make somebody want you. And so the man said he, he does not look at her as somebody he could be romantically involved in, no matter how long he was talking with her on the phone, maybe she got there and he just didn't like how her, her mouth twisted up, if it twisted up. Any little thing can set somebody to say, I'm not really interested. Now, I don't really believe it's right that he waited eight months to say how he felt, but sometimes it, it takes, when you meet them in person, it could be the little thing that set somebody to say, hmm, she not my type, but hmm. I don't like how, how he, his eye go this way or, you know what? I don't like his conversation. He too cocky or, I mean, it could be anything. But the bottom line is he did let her know. Because a lot of people will let you keep calling them and asking them if they want to get together when they really not interested in you. So I, 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 I do commend him for being honest. Okay, so. That's the end of that. We'll just have to see what happens. I think that that's going to be the end of Boza and Vanya. So the next couple that we will talk about is Joe and Magna. Now, I didn't talk about this last week. I forgot because I, I don't think I was in my house. And so I didn't have it written down. But Joe and Magna. So Joe... Uh, last week, he was supposed to be meeting Magna in Poland. 
The producers came to his door and was knocking for hours and hours and hours. And it was, we, I didn't think he was going to open the door. So he finally opened the door and he gets to Poe and he's not packed and he's not ready. And it was just a mess. It's like he didn't even know he was going out of town. And so I felt like, okay, did this man have a back door? Because when she told him, hey, I don't want to have sex until I come to the United States, I felt like maybe he went with another woman that night and had his fun and was running late coming back and came through the, the, the back door. Now, that's just me. It might not be the truth. But it just didn't seem right that people was knocking on his doors for hours and Magda, Magda was calling him and there was no answer. Okay, so this week, we're going to go to this week. So he's in Poland and she tells him in person she doesn't want to, them to sleep in the same room. So in the same bed. So he had to sleep on the couch. So she takes him to this class where... They learn how to make pretzels. And he's talking very seductive and about innuendos about sex. And she was uh, looking very embarrassed about the whole, everything that was coming out of his mouth. After that, they went to have, try, I think they was trying vodkas or some type of drink. Uh, alcoholic beverage, I believe it was different types of vodka or tequilas or something like that they were trying. And that's when she went into conversation telling him about she really felt like, you know, her feelings was hurt that he, you know, slept with another woman and all of the things and how she doesn't have trust with in him. And so she's saying they can't sleep in the same bed that night. And he was very, very disappointed. But he understood. So he slept on the couch that morning. He got up early and got in the bed with her. And she then tells him, well, until you put a ring on my finger, I don't want to have sex with you. And he's looking like her, like, are you crazy? But before I get there, let me go back. While they were out when they was testing the alcohols, um, she tells him that she wore a wedding band on her finger so that no man would try to talk to her. And he was just looking at her like she was crazy. And he just said, we didn't have any type of conversation that we were in a serious relationship where we was not going to be seeing anybody else. When this happened, I didn't even, we were, we just, basically start talking. And she was like, well, well, what was the date? Well, what was the date of it? My thing is, if you forgave the man, why are you still talking about and asking him questions about a woman he slept with? He said it meant nothing. He said he didn't know that you guys were exclusive. So what is this going to, what, what is this going to do for you? So that just shows her age. Okay. She's 23 years old. He's 34. I believe that he's probably too mature for her, even though he's a party guy. So, and she just showed her age by keep talking about this woman and saying she wore a ring on her finger. He didn't tell her to do none of that. Nobody told her to do none of that. So, as I said before, ladies and men, don't act like you in a relationship unless you've had that conversation. And men will have it for you. Before I got married, my husband, we was dating. He said to me, listen, are, are, are you seeing anybody else? Because I'm not. And I don't want you seeing anybody else. I want it to be you and I. You are my woman. Period. These conversations happen. So don't take it upon yourself to think that you guys are in a relationship. And it's crazy because she never slept with him. She never seen him before. But she's a soul man that they're in a relationship. So then let me take you back to, he woke up that morning, he came in her room, he got in the bed and held her and she told him, hey, I don't want to have sex with you until you put a ring on my finger. And he was looking at her again like she was crazy. And he was like, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. Sex is very important in a relationship and I'm not going to marry you and, and I have not had sex with you. I wouldn't know if I'm compatible with you. 
And she was like, well, what if you turn 60 years old and you can't have sex? He was like, hold up. I think I'll be able to have sex at 60. Again, she's telling her age. So she was like, it's not important. He said, it's important. It's important if I'm compatible. So that's not going to happen. So at the end of the day, we I think that she's going to eventually have sex with him before the trip is over with. She have not told him that she was in a relationship and she dropped everything and she was going to move with this man to America and he, they end up breaking up. And so she, she wants to make sure that this time is going to work. She talked to her mother about it. Her mother was afraid that she moves too fast. And I think she just, her motive wants to get to America. It's too many red flags with Magda. Okay. And she's not totally honest with him. She's telling him, I want to know everything about you and a woman that I should know about. Everybody has a past. Why do we need to go backwards? She's not being honest with him. She hasn't told her about her, told him about her past. And he's not even asking her. So you shouldn't ask people what you're not giving information on yourself. So it's red flags all over Magna. I think that Joe sees this and hopefully he proceeds with caution. So we have to see what happens next week. Next on the list, we're going to talk about Brian and Ingrid. Guys, I cannot stand Brian. He's a liar and everything else. And Ingrid is a trip too. So this week, as I said last week, he he's taking her on another trip. Okay, so they meet his friend out to dinner. The friend is asking them about the relationship. Brian immediately says that they have not slept together. And he hopes on this trip, perhaps that will happen. And he said that's how he's going to, it's going to make them a couple if they sleep together. He goes on to say about somehow or another, the the friend brings up about his ex-wives or whatever, and it comes out that Brian has been married four times. And Ingrid is like, oh my God, you never told me that. Am I hearing you right? You been married uno, dos, tres, cuatro? He said cuatro, yes. And she said, you didn't ask, You never told me that? And he was like, and you never asked. You never asked me that. So if I didn't reveal something, does not mean I'm a liar. She said, no, you are a liar because you did not tell me this. So then he talks about how he was married four times and he was engaged three times. And it didn't work out. And he reveals that the fourth man, fourth wedding, the marriage is still valid. That he's not even divorced. And he tells her he's not divorced because she won't sign the papers. Now, she looking real crazy around this time. She looking like, what? Are you kidding me? So she sent up, been in communications for five years with a married man. Who do that? And he also says to the friend, the friend says, well, where did you guys meet? And she was talking about uh, online and he was saying how he met women online. And she said, well, did you tell them you was 40 something, 43 years old? Did you lie to them like you lied to me? And he was looking like, like this is not going well. <laughs> And my thing is, Brian is a whole liar. He lied about the wives that we see to we learning we learned this week. He lied about being that he is still a married man. That's important information that you don't leave behind. He lied about his age. He lied and left the fact that he was a drug dealer. He's just a liar, and he's a user. He using these women from Brazil, hoping they will take care of him and be a caretaker to him like he wants them to be. 
Who do that? And he wants these young women. And, and Ingrid is a beautiful woman. He's he's whining and dining her. He's buying gifts for the kids and her. He's taking her all on these vacations. And I'm just trying to figure out, where is he getting his money from? Where is he still getting his money from? And he's trying to buy this woman. And it's not working. Because I don't think Ingrid want him like that. And what's crazy about Ingrid, she got three children. And you don't ask a man, are you divorced? How many times you been married? How do you get your money? Why did your divorce last relationship end? My queens and kings, you must ask questions. You must ask questions. Because if she would have asked the right questions or even asked questions or cared enough to ask questions... He wasn't even been over there to visit her. So, do she just want to be on the show? Cause, or do she? Is she just looking for somebody to just? And she says she's looking for a better life, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this man has showed you twenty red flags, and some of these things could you could have known before he came if you would have asked. And that's what men do. When you don't ask the question, and then when it come up, they ask you, well, you didn't ask me. They tell you, you didn't ask me. And I tell every woman, ask questions. I tell every man, ask questions before you go down and see somebody, before you get all invested in somebody, to make sure that you guys are on the same page, that this person is somebody that could be somebody for you or goes against your standards. So, I don't know. It, it, it don't look good for Brian. I don't see Ingrid giving him sex. So, we just have to wait and see what happens. The next couple we're going to talk about is Lauren and Faith. And I'm going to make this real quick because I don't want this video to be long. So, Lauren, she talks to her family last week about what happened between i'm sorry faith talks about her fam talks with her family last week about what went down with her and norman okay so this week they go out and she takes them to this restaurant and they're eating intestines of i believe a chicken and his old nasty behind lauren is acting like he is enjoying it and all of the things and they're talking and he's like well how did it go with your sisters and your family do they like me and she said they like you they do and he said that's good that's good and he said so am i gonna can i be your boyfriend again and she said the thing that bothers me is you cheated and so how do I know that you're not going to cheat again? And he was like, because I wasn't with you at the time, but I'm with you now. You're beautiful. You're all that I want. You're perfect. You're this, you're that. I mean, he was laying it on thick. And she was like, no, I'm not perfect. He said, until you do something to make me feel otherwise, you are. And, you know, she she looking for love. She's, she's yearning for love so bad. She was like, well, yes, you my man. And he said, well, good, good. He said, well, the laws here, we cannot, the same sex cannot get married. So I was thinking we could go somewhere else close by that they, another country close by that they will get married. We can get married. And we can do that and come back and I can get you, get us and your family a house. I can start doing that. And so... <laughs> so after that after they said that after he said that he then said and if that don't work out then I know you wouldn't want me to marry another woman but I can marry your mama I can marry your mother and she was looking like you can marry what and he, she, he was like I can marry your mother and she started laughing my mother too old for you and he said no no it just be in and name only, so I can stay here. So this man is is pitching his best shot, honey. 
He pitching his best shot. He wants to stay. He don't plan on going back to the United States. He desperate to stay in, in, in her country, the Philippines. Now, Faith is really thinking, this man, I believe, want to stay here more than he want to be with me. And she right. She's not crazy. Yes, that's what it is. But she's acting so, so naive because she's overlooking her inner thoughts. She's overlooking all the red flags. The red flag is when he came and had an STD, girl. So she's not very smart. Only thing I can say about Faith is that, and it's a lot of women like that. They're, they're very, they're desperate. They want a man. And it's not just the trans women. It's regular women out here that just will do anything to have a man. And that's kind of sad. And that goes into your self-esteem. And so Faith, she told us the story how a lot of men don't want to be in a relationship with them or, or don't just use them for sex. And, of course, that messes with her self-esteem. So, to have somebody that wants her, for her, it means a lot. And she wants it desperately. And so, she's acting desperately. So, this was their last day. And they go back to the mother's house. And these people are treating her, him with so much respect. Okay? And giving him everything they have, which they don't have much. But they love each other. They are a family, and they are family that have love. And so he goes back to them, and they have, they said everybody has the, how should I say? I forgot the name of it. I think it's uh, karaoke, yeah. Everybody has karaoke, and they sing uh, Christmas carols. They start singing Christmas carols and loving on each other. And then the mother made some food. And they just really are showing this man love. And they showing the man love because they feel like he has somebody because he's an American. So um, has some something. They feel like he has money because he's an American. And what People from other countries don't understand if everybody in the United States is not rich, they don't have money. They're struggling to pay Peter and Paul just like everybody else. And so that's the only reason they sitting up here treating this man like a king. Now, what I don't like about faith, if you're going to go ahead and you're going to tell the truth that this man came over with an STD, then you should have told the truth and said this man don't have a pot to piss in. This man is homeless in the United States, and that's why he wants to stay here. And he's talking about all these jobs he can get over in the Philippines. He could have got that in the United States. He's a lazy bum. And from what I understand, he is trying to hide from child support. So how low can you go? Can you go down low? Can you go to the floor? <laughs> Lauren is on the floor, honey. That's how low he is. And so he goes, he says to Faith, did you tell your family what we were talking about earlier? So the mother said, are you guys, what are you guys now? And she was like, we're a couple. And so she was, they was like smiling, you know. And so he said to Lauren, tell your, tell your family what we discussed. So she was looking like, do you really want me to tell? He said, tell them. So she said, well, he said he wants to marry me. We Same sex we can't do here. So he wants to do it uh, somewhere else, close by that the, the, the laws are different. And then tell her, tell her what I said the next thing in case that don't work out. And then he said, he wants to marry you, mother. And she looking and and she said, uh, come again? He said he can marry you. And so they all started laughing. The sisters and the brothers, they laughing. The mama laughing. <laughs> Me? I'm too old for him. 
And they still think he's joking. And oh, she he said, she said, no, he that's a way that he can stay here. She he's like, yeah, we can stay here if I was to marry you. And she looking, and when she found out he was serious, she looking at her own her own daughter like she a fool. And then she said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. I don't want no parts of that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Absolutely not. I don't want no parts of that. First of all, why would you even tell your mama that? I don't care if he said you should tell her. I would have been, no, I'm not going to tell her. Absolutely not. And so he was like, well, I see she doesn't want to do it. Uh, so maybe we, we'll figure something else out. He looked like a clown for even saying that. It shows he don't care nothing about faith. All he cares about is living in the Philippines himself. He's a bum. He's a bum. So we just have to wait and see what happens next week. But that was crazy to me. Okay, so the last couple we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about it pretty, quick, pretty quickly, is Niles and Matilda. <laughs> okay, so Niles and Matilda. So Niles goes to meet the man that's going to, represent him as his father and he tells the man that his parents not gonna be able to come and he's going to do the knocking and all of the things so the man is like well yeah i would do it but what do you mean you're gonna do you're doing the knocking so have you talked to the family he said i went to the family's house and he was like oh no that's not what you were supposed to do. You was not supposed to go there. You were supposed to come straight to me and we go together. And he was like, well, I didn't know that. Well, what did you say? And he was like, I said, I can't get married, but I'll do the knock. And he was like, what? You can't get married? Uh, what? Why not? And he said, well, because Matilda was saying I need all this money to pay for this wedding and I don't have it. And he was like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not how we go. That is not how we go. So, he says, listen, this is what was told to me. That Matilda said that I had to pay for a wedding and that I needed all this money. She's inviting. Ah, let me go back. So, the guy says, go get my wife, go get my wife, Matilda, get, and bring them back. So, he said, so tell me what happened. And so, he said, can I talk to you privately? So, he said, sure. So, he said, listen, Matilda is the one that told me that I had to have all this money for the wedding. She wants to invite almost 100 people, She 90 people. She's inviting her friends, her friends from work, her, her friends from school, her, her, her brother's friends, her mother's friends. And I didn't have the money for that. So he was like, oh, no, 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 no. That is wrong. You need no lot of money to marry. All you need after the knocking is to get married. It's, a, it's simple and our custom. You don't have to do all of that. I don't understand why she told you that. So he, they walk back. And so now he's looking at Matilda. And he's saying, Matilda, what did you, did you tell him that he has to have a lot of money? And she was like, before we get there, now says to Matilda, Matilda, how come you didn't bring me to him first instead of taking me to your family's house? And she said, you're right. I should have done that. I'm sorry. And so he said, what? You're right. I told you that. I'm sorry. So then he said, and then he said that I didn't need any money to have the wedding. For the knocking and all of that or the wedding that is a simple custom 
And all those people should not be coming. And so Matilda was looking real, she was looking real pissed. She was like, and she said, well, I explained to you why I said that. I explained to you why I wanted people to come. You knew this. I told you this. So he said, well, no, you didn't tell me everything. Let's keep it, let's keep it real. You did not tell me everything. And you, if you, if, and if you knew I didn't have the money, then why would you ask me that I need to pay this? Now he was right about that because at the end of the day, he shouldn't have had to pay for everything. Okay. And so she was just sitting there looking like she wanted to explode. And he was kind of talking to her disrespectful. So the man was like, no, 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 no. That's not how you speak. No, no, no. Don't talk to her like that. So he was like, well, I'm going to say how I, I want to say because this is how I feel. I feel like, you know, you didn't tell me the truth. And so she was like real, real upset. So after all of the things, he said he needed to think about some things. And they got back, went on, went on and got back in the car with Uber, whatever they was taking. And she was like, you really embarrassed me. You sat up and made me look like a fool. You embarrassed me. You know, dog on well, we talk about this. I told you, you the one that canceled the wedding. You the one that said you didn't want to get married. So I said why I was doing all of these things. You act like $200 was a lot of money. $200 is nothing. And you sitting up here complaining and talking to me. And so he went like this. His face had went crazy. He was like, quit talking to me. Stop talking to me. I mean, I got scared watching him. I mean, he was about to snap off on Matilda. Now, do I think Matilda did a little extra that she wasn't supposed to do? Absolutely. Because first of all, the sister didn't say he need, she needed $300. She, she, she upped the ante. To keep a little money in her pocket, which women do, okay? She should have set up, if $200 is not a whole lot of money, honey, then you should have peeled off 200 bills and threw it at your sister. Because it was the sister that asked for the money, which I don't blame her. It's, it's, it's for you. So you need to have pay up or he pay up. Somebody pay me. I'm cooking for free. So I get that. Now... I just think that Miles, Miles was surprised that this man wasn't saying the same things that Matilda said. And then he looking at his mama and daddy said she probably, I mean, let's keep it real. A lot of people say Nigerians are known to be scammers and everything else. Mama and daddy didn't want no parts of it. Said this girl is going to use you. You bring her to the country and she going to bring her family over. And guess what? Then she going to leave you. And really, that's how it go. <laughs> that, that, that's how it go. Okay? Am I right or wrong? That's how it go. And so, he really was not, I don't think, planning on marrying that woman. I don't think he was coming back to Africa. Or Nigeria. I don't think he was coming back. And this was his way to say, girl, bye. Girl, bye. She thought Niles was a fool. Niles, just because he has autism spectrum, doesn't mean you're not intelligent. Doesn't mean you can't add. You can't understand. And so, she thought she was going to Zoom him and have this big wedding and make him pay for it and all of the things. And let's understand this. Matilda has been, th been through this before. I'm quite sure she dated another American because her goal is to get over to the United States. Now, was she honest about that? Yes, she was. He sees that her family are very poor. And so, of course, he, she wants to come back and give a helping hand to her family. But at the end of the day, Niles wasn't the one. It, the, the, the red flags was when his parents was a, was a no-show. And she knew that. The red flag is when he came over here and told her, listen, I can't marry you. That's the red flag. And so he thought he was going to lie to the family and 
They was going to let him do the knocking. But the old elderly person said, no, uh-uh, that's not how it go over here. After the knocking comes marriage. You know, but Matilda wanted all of this big, big knocking um, it, to be beautiful and for all her people to be there because he said he wasn't marrying her right away. And he knew that. And he set up and made her look like a fool in front of her people. And so he says they get he says to her, stop talking to me. Uh, honey, if somebody had looked at me and said that, I would have been. But no, she's she first of all, her, her brother already said she has a temper, okay? And so she's she's mad, so she she don't even see his face doing all of that she's just like no 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 i'm not gonna stop talking because you you know the truth you lied to that man you made me look bad and all i know is honey that's how i ended and they show last next week that he's thinking about hey calling the whole thing off <laughs> and i think he should call it off because i don't trust matilda i think that possibly I think that regardless, that's how they do. The, the Nigerian women, they act like they love the Americans, the American man, and they want to marry you, and they going to have your, they had the children, and all of that. But at the end of the day, Nigeria is usually the women marry Nigerian men. And she just want to get to the United States. That's what I think. And she might be acting like she in love and all of that. But when it's almost time for her to get that green card, when she get that green card, she going to turn ah! and be somebody different. She going to be one to turn her face. Ah! I got my green card. I don't need you. And you can read a whole lot of stories how they take their kids and everything and lead American man. So I don't think that he should marry her. I think he needs to go on back home like he probably had planned on doing. He didn't have no intentions on marrying her. And guess what? You know they done had sex. They've been staying in a hotel all this time. He done had sex with her. He got what he wanted and he gone. Is he right? Absolutely not. He's wrong. They both wrong. Because she zooming him and he zooming her. But that's all I have. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching my channel. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody.